and uh, time right now to get a uh, check of uh, our tips with uh, Joshua Winger from the law firm of Bird and Bird LLC. Josh, I understand we're talking about uh, the four state planning documents everyone should have today. Is that correct? Sure, Bill. Uh, yeah, that, that's, right, that's right today. Uh, well, everyone who is age 18 years or older should have a financial power of attorney, a health care power of attorney, a living will, and a last will and testament. Yeah, what is a financial power of attorney, Josh? Sure. Well, a financial power of attorney, usually called a durable general power of attorney, authorizes you, your named agent, to act on your behalf with regard to your finances when you are no longer able to act on your own because of illness or incapacity. Among other things, the financial power of attorney authorizes your named agent to pay your bills, access your bank accounts, manage your real estate and investments, deal with government agencies, uh, including tax authorities. The durable general power of attorney can be effective immediately uh, when you sign it, or it can take effect when and if uh, two doctors, one of whom is your primary doctor, certify that you are no longer able to manage your financial affairs. Now, that durable general power of attorney will terminate either when you revoke it or in writing or upon your death. Okay, now, um, what is a health care power of attorney then? Sure, well, a health care power of attorney, also called a health care proxy, uh, authorizes your named agent to make medical decisions for you in the event that you are unable to make them yourself. The health care power of attorney also authorizes your named agent to act as your HIPAA rep. A HIPAA uh, stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. That's a mouthful. By authorizing your named agent to act as your HIPAA representative, your named agent will have access to your protected medical records and health information. Okay, now you mentioned uh, living will and last will and testament. What's the difference between those? Sure. Well, a living will, which is sometimes combined with a health care power of attorney, is a legal document that indicates your named agent, uh, uh, or to your named agent, I should say, what, if any, uh, life-sustaining treatments you would want if you were terminally ill um, while you're alive, um, or if you're in a persistent vegetative state or suffering from some other condition where you have lost your mental capacity and are physically dependent on others with no likelihood of recovery. Now, generally, the living will directs your named agent to authorize or withhold uh, CPR or artificial uh, respiration, tube or intravenous uh, hydration or nutrition medications, blood transfusions, dialysis, medical tests to diagnose or treat a condition. Uh, the last will and testament, on the other hand, takes effect when you die. The last will and testament names a personal representative or executor to administer your estate and make sure that everything is distributed to your beneficiaries in accordance with the terms of your last will and testament. Hmm. Okay, now what I need a last will and testament if I'm married? Yes. Uh, just because you're married does not mean that your spouse will automatically inherit everything you own. If you die without a last will and testament, you're considered intestate in the state of Maryland, and the state of Maryland has its own distribution provisions for intestate estates. For example, if you have children, then your spouse may not inherit everything. Rather, your children may inherit, uh, uh, or they may be entitled to some portion of your estate. Oh. You know, assets are titled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, are there any other documents that I would need, Josh? Um, well, perhaps. It depends on your individual situation. There are different types of trust documents that might be needed. For example, if you have substantial assets and you're worried about taxes when you die or if you're in a second marriage, uh, you may want to make sure that children from the first marriage are taken care of or if you have a minor or disabled child um, or if you are concerned about long-term care costs and want to protect your assets. All of these um, situations uh, could make a trust appropriate. There are trusts that are established while you're alive. Those are called living trusts. And there are trusts that are established upon your death, and those are called testamentary trusts. It's best to seek legal uh, advice that, that's competent to de determine what type of trust, if any, would be most beneficial in your particular situation. Okay, now if any of our listeners have additional questions or want to learn more about estate planning documents, how do they get a hold of you, Josh? Sure, well, uh, we can be contacted at 301-464-7448 or on our website, birdandbird.com. That's bird with a Y, and you spell out and. Uh, as a reminder, we have in, informal 
Medicaid uh, workshops on the second Monday of each month from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at our office in Bowie. The next workshop is August 11th, and space is limited to 10 people, so you should call and reserve your seat. Also, we have an informal estate planning workshop on the third Thursday of every month in our Prince Frederick office from 5.30 to 7 p.m. The next estate planning workshop is August 21st. Uh, please join us next week for more tips, though. Okay, we'll do that. Josh will be talking to you next week. Thanks so much. All right, uh, thank you, Bill. That's attorney Josh Winger from the law firm of Bird & Bird LLC. Elder law lawyers with offices in Bowie and Prince Frederick, Maryland. Not just good lawyers, good counsel.